Now I would like to invite Iram Abbas. Can delight and give us one more dear for love. Beneath the heavens, beneath the sky, there lies the lane stretched wide. Lane of dust, smoke and disaster, darkness, suffocation and blaster, demons, devils and monsters, all free with no master. Where vultures are feasting, dogs devouring, demons dancing, angels clamoring, guns torturing, weapons wielding, where sky is red by the blood being shed, the conscience of civilized nation asleep, where in the world is humanity being led, here is the corpse, is the thought cut deep. Yes, there lies the lane beneath the sky. The clamor so loud for the reply. Ferocity, brutality, and atrocity. Is this the vanity that you call humanity? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it vindicates, but still the way of occupied Kashmir wants answer from the advocator of peace, but actually the bringer of war. That is this the vanity that you call humanity? My listeners, back to 10 December 1948. 71 years ago, International Human Rights Declaration was adopted with an intent to give, protect and observe inalienable human rights to which all human beings without any discrimination are entitled. But wait, what contained in occupied Kashmir, where unfortunately humanity is best described as inhumanity just because of the so-called sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic of India, the worst criminal, the biggest usurper. Mr. President, one of the universal principles say crime, wheresoever, whatsoever, must pay the penalty. But welcome to Eden on Earth, Kashmir, where India's crime against humanity are not only measurable, but also yet in question. Today, I'll take this time out to highly dispute just a few serious crimes of India against humanity in IOK. The very first article of human right protects the innate freedom and equality. But look in occupied Kashmir, where each freedom fighter is taken as a terrorist, we demand a very basic right of self Self-determination is a huge, huge crime, and where India, while resorting to various tactics of tyranny and oppression, left no stone unturned to silence the voice of oppressed Kashmiris and to suppress their just right to freedom. To snatch one's freedom is doubtless the worst crime. But ladies and gentlemen, the story of crime does not end here. Article 2 clearly talks about freedom from any sort of discrimination. But see, in occupied valley of Kashmir, where Muslims have been paying huge penalty for being Muslims on every social, political, educational, even on culture grounds, where a slow but constant Muslim genocide is underway, this also violating human rights General Assembly Resolution 96 and 260. And not only Muslims, even Christians in Dalits are being discriminated in each and every walk of life, a clear violation of Article 2, but the crimes are still on and the criminal is still free. Article 3 saves the right of life, liberty, and personal security, but come and see in my poor Kashmir. Where blood of Kashmir is a soldier, where extrajudicial killing and enforced disappearance of the order of the day, where freedom of speech is banned, but raids and looting by Indian army are common, where innocents are being assaulted and molested and tortured on a daily basis just to subdue their revolt against brutal Indian army. Respected audience, the hours and hours will be passed, but India's crime against humanity can't be counted. Human Rights Charter, Article Number 4, explicitly saying that no one shall be held in slavery, but come and see. In my pure Kashmir, where each soldier of Indian Army is kept over every seven innocent people of the Kashmir, and where against the will of self determination, they have been victim of serious human rights abuses for seven decades. And despite the decision of Article 5 that says no one shall be subjected to torture or inhumane or degrading treatment, each and every day in occupied Kashmir is witness of brutalities. Don't go much back. Since the year 2012, uh, 2018, according to Kashmir Media Service, Indian forces marched over 315 Kashmiris killed 21 in custody, arrested 5,600, burned around 600 houses, and about 1,300 people lost their rights due to pallet gun in the one year. And the ongoing miserable situation after the Pulwama incident is doubtlessly increasing India's crime against humanity day after day. Malister, from the first till the last, there is not a single human right that India has not violated in IUK. Yes, from massacres to massacres, from curfews to terrorism, from use of lethal weapons to pellet guns, from injuries to killing, from physical torment to mental torture, from burning of houses to crackdowns, from detentions to disappearance, from children abuse to women violence, from Brahan Vani to Zafar Vani, from Mustafar to Nilofar. India has always been engaged in every kind of war crime denounced by international humanitarian law, but the crimes that 
still on and the criminal is still free. Mr. President, to our surprise and grief, these are the crimes that are punishable in India's armed state according to law and constitution. That definitely gives rise to a question that by denying the by, by denying the human right of Kashmiri people, are they challenging their very humanity? Yes, I would ask the question from the beholder of human rights whether the people of Kashmir not human or India is so worthy enough to be unanswerable for such war crimes in IOK. My listeners, what's available? But the international community and human rights association must remember whosoever refuses to remember inhumanity is prone to new risk of infection and injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Thus, they have to stay up. They have to take serious steps against this inhumanity and they have to ask these questions now. That how more will Kashmiris be oppressed? How long will they be suppressed? How more will our brothers die? How long will our sisters cry? How more the eyes of our mothers be wet? How long will it take for our pain to set? Yes, we want to know how more of our people will go missing. How long will the oppressor keep dissing? How more will our people burn with rage? How long, how long will it take to break this gate? A lot express, but time is limited. So I landed by saying, with our hopes and struggles, always high, let's hold our weapons of pan and words instead of sword to highlight these crimes and let the criminal face the music and also let the international community hear the voices of oppressed Kashmiris that we are blind to the pallid guns we receive. But who has made you blind, respected United Nation? Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience time and patience. Thank you so much.